city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication mm -hmm. and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment, torment ascends up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahushua. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I look, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. So one sat on the bright on the cloud like the Son of Man, and he had what? A crown and a sickle. Okay. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. For the what? Harvest of the earth is ripe. Let's hear about this harvest. Remember, it's a man that was sitting on that throne. And after that, you know what I'm saying, he came and he had, you know, he had a sickle in his hand. He, he said that the harvest was right. He said he's about to get this harvest going. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Mm -hmm. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. For her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. And the winepress was trodden down without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse briders, bridles, mm -hmm. by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. This, this chapter 14? Yeah, now it's 15. Go to 19 for me. So that was the wrath of God, right? You start off with the beast. The beast set everybody up, everybody got that mark. The next, you got the lamb to show up, and he got 144,000 with him, right? So then the lamb show up with the 144,000 to separate them from the rest of the people. These are the people that was chosen. The book says no gal in their mouth, right? Then you read on down, you keep on going. Then we find out that the man was sitting on top, right? He came out. He looked like the son of man. He had a sickle in his hand. He thrust it, and he, that thing was ripe, so he, he harvested something. And after he harvested, another angel came. He had, he had power over fire, right? He came. And then he, he put wrath on the whole earth. Right? Let's jump over to 19. Is it 19 that I want? What, what verse 1 say in 19? I might want 20. these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Uh huh. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Right? Salvation has come, they said. Watch this in 21. It's chapter 21, verse 1. He said, they said at this point, look, the whore got judged. Right? Babylon got judged. Right? This is what we're looking for. And watch this. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared uh -huh. as a bride, bride adorned for her husband. Hold on. As a what? As a bride adorned for her husband. Mmm, that's what I wanted to get to. Who remember we left off last week? We did uh, Ruth, right? Ruth, right? We talked about Ruth. We just introduced Ruth a little bit. We found out Ruth was from where? What country was she from? Moab. She from Moab, wasn't she? Right? We learned that Ruth was from Moab. The book told us that the Moabites shouldn't enter into the, what was it, the 10th generation? To after the 10th generation? So. Right? Well, we looked at Ruth. Let's read a little bit more about Ruth. Who we leave off last week? Uh, Ruth 1, 4. Ruth 1, 4? Ruth 1, 5. All right. This is uh, Ruth chapter 1, verse 5. Remember what we just read, though. We read all the way up to, you know what I'm saying? Salvation has come. Then all of a sudden, 
Jerusalem come down, it was adorned like a like a bride. Chilion died, and also both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Uh -huh. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, mm -hmm. that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in, in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she, uh, wherefore, Ruth chapter 1 should be about verse 6. 7. Verse 7. Okay. Thank you. okay. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters in law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters in law, Go, return each to her mother's house. Uh huh. And the Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. So he so remember, Naomi is a what? Hebrew. She a Hebrew, hundred percent. Right? She a Hebrew. She one of our people. She told them her daughters in law because they were Moabites. She had Hebrew sons that took Moabites. They took foreigners that they wives. So the Hebrew woman told her daughter-in-law, look, I tell you what, go on back to y'all home. Right? What'd she say to him? Say it again. April, don't you start trying to read now. Go return each to her mother's house. Go back. So he told her, go back to y'all mama house. Right? Because she's looking like, okay, look, y'all husbands died. My sons died. Why don't y'all just go on back home to y'all mama house? Watch what the woman said. Let's see. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Mm -hmm. Then she kissed them, and they lift up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Uh huh. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Uh huh. Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Mm -hmm. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Mm -hmm. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieves me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Right? So she basically, she's mourning. She's like, I lost my husband. I lost my two sons. Because I lost my two sons, y'all lost y'all husbands. So now all of us is husbandless. I'm old. There's no way that I'm going to be able to produce more children to satisfy y'all. Remember, our women, the strength of our women at that time were to produce children. So she's trying to tell them, you go out, go find y'all, go back home, go find y'all a nice man, you know what I'm saying? Then y'all have a, get you a nice little family. She's like, it don't make no sense to stay here with me. I'm just dry, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing gonna happen with me. I'm just done, right? So she's trying to convince them to go. The women's like, no, 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 no. Watch what they say. And they lift up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave, but Ruth clave unto her. Ruth did what? Clave unto her. Mm. Ruth clave unto her. Let's go to uh, John chapter six. It's John chapter six, verse sixty-six. You know what the mark of the beast is? What the number of it is? We didn't read it, but who know who know the number of the mark of the beast? Is it? Did it say we heard that? Six hundred three score and six. Yeah, we did. Oh, we did read it. There we go. Now we at John six six six. Look at this. Watch this. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Mm -hmm. And then said Yahushua unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Right? So Yahushua said unto the twelve, to the twelve what? Disciples. To the twelve disciples, the ones that ended up being apostles. He turned on to them. Hey, y'all be quiet back there. He turned on to them. He said, he said, oh, is everybody going to turn on? The rest of the people left. Remember we last, or last week, week before last Monday, we, we talked about two different groups. We said there's one group, right? That one group, that group is the followers, right? The Christians, we would call them, or, or just the multitude of people, right? Then the other group would be the disciples. So once the once the people that were just following, they're just around, they're interested, once they turned around and went away, he asked a question. He said, you know what? Is y'all going to turn away too? Well, watch what happened. 
Then, and then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You mm -hmm. have the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And we believe and are sure that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And Yahushua answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, mm -hmm. and one of you is a devil? And he spake of Judah, Iscariot, the son of Simon, for, it is, for he it is was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. All right, go to John chapter 20. So what did they do? He has, he has it. Everybody left him. He turned around. He's like, oh, is y'all going to leave too? What did they choose to do? Cleave to him. They cleave to him. Right? Just like Ruth. Going to their home. Right? Naomi was sitting there. Naomi was like, listen, man, y'all just gone. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go find y'all some husband. Them women was sitting there like, no, nah, we ain't crazy. Take us to your people. These people ain't darn crazy. You look at these people in the world, they're not crazy. If we start representing ourselves like our people, like who we are, these people will look it up and be like, no, take me to your house. Right? Let me come to where you are. Right? We, we ain't going to be able to beat these people off of us. We just got to make sure that we represent ourselves correctly. All right? Keep going. Where we at? This is John chapter, uh, what did I say, 20? This is John chapter 20. Give me uh, verse 15. And Yahshua said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Mm -hmm. Whom seekest thou? Mm-hmm. And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you have borne him from here, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Right? So this is a woman that was sitting there crying because Yahushua just died. Right? And she just sitting there. She turned, She came three days later like, man, the man said he'll be up three days later. Oh, who took him? Right? Who took him from here? Because the tomb was empty. She looked like, man, he died right here, and now his tomb is empty. So she thought she had talking to a gardener. She talking to Yahushua. But she, she thought she was talking about to a guard. She was like, listen, just if you took him and you took him out of here, just tell me where he is. All right, just tell me something. She's sick. She's mourning. All right, let's see what happened. And Yahshua said unto him, Mary. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. Mm -hmm. But go to thy brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, my God and your God. Mm-hmm. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken those things to her. Right, but the first thing she did when she saw it was him, what did she do? She told the master. Right, Let's go know. back, watch this. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and she tried to him. cleave onto him. I sent to my father. All right, she tried to cleave onto him. <laughs> he had to turn around. Uh, don't touch me now. Mm -hmm. Right, hey, it ain't time yet. Don't touch me now. Watch it. Watch yourself now. Hold on. All right, I gotta go to the father real quick. All right, but go ahead and send this message for, for me. Same thing that we see happening right here in the in the book of Ruth. All right, let's go back. Let's go to uh, Ruth chapter two now. Let's go to uh, Ruth chapter two. We start at verse one. We gonna learn a little a little bit about Boaz. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Mm -hmm. So Ruth, he was a kinsman of who? Her husband. So he was related, right? He was like her husband's cousin, probably. Yeah, he is related to her husband. Let's hear about it. We're going to learn some law. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. Right? So Naomi trying to get her a man. Right? So she going out there. I mean, uh, Ruth. I always do that too. I've been doing that thing for three years. Every time we talk about this thing, I'll call her Naomi. Um, but Ruth, she trying to get her a man. So the way the way this thing works, it's like it's twofold what she's trying to do. One, she got to provide for herself. Right? She's a widow at this point. So she ain't got no, she ain't have a man. Like, remember, our culture was the man take care of the woman. Period. All right, with no other way to go about it. The man had to take care of the woman. Either you as a father take care of your daughter, even if she grown, ain't none of that kick you out of 18 stuff. No, if she grown, she right here with you. And you take care of her until some man comes along and takes her off of your hands. Then he got to pay you, and then he take care of her. Right, that's just how it works. So when you're a widow, you don't have that, right? Because you had a man to take care of you, but he's gone. So now you kind of out on your own and let somebody else bring you in. So she is too poor what she was trying to do. One, she was trying to feed her darn self, right? So then, at the same time, she's trying to get a man. So the smart thing to do is, let me go pick food out of a field where there's a man. 
Right? So that's what she did. She was like, you know, read it again. Watch it. You can see her logic. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grapes. In other words, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and pick in the field where somebody's going to go ahead and look on me. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to look at me. So she went out there and looked. Okay, for sure. He's going to be nice to me. He's going he gonna to think it's beautiful. Let's see. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And, uh -huh. her, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was the kindred of Elimelech. Right? It say her hap was. In other words, her intentions were. What she was trying to do was. What happened. Was yeah, she was trying to go over there. She was trying to go over there where Boaz was. Oh, that Boaz field over there? Okay, well, I'm going to go pick it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm gonna go, let me go harvest over there. Remember, our, 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 our law would tell us that if we had a field and we grew out the field, we would leave the field mm -hmm. for the widows, for the poor, and for the hungry. Right. And then they, even if we harvest out of it, we can't harvest everything. We got to leave something left so the people that walking by that's hungry, they can just pick out our field. Right? So if you look at it, the way our law worked, it was so loving and perfect. A lot of you Christians are trying to tell you that, you know, oh, I'm so happy I wasn't around with the love while you're but hungry. Right? These you you people don't care nothing about you. People won't charge you interest on interest. Right? These people, I mean, these people just cheapskates. Right? Just darn capitalism. Just want to make money off of darn everything moving. We didn't do that to our people. Right? We shared everything we got. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. Uh huh. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. And then Boaz said unto his servants that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers. Watch this. Hold on. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 24 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 17. It's Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 17. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. See that? Right? That's our laws protecting our widow. She is a widow. It said, don't you, don't you pervert the justice of that. Then don't try to take her raiment. Don't try to take her clothes. Right? That's collateral. Right? You look at it like, okay, you can pick in my field, but let me, get let me have your jacket. For you know what I'm saying? Let me get your jacket. After you done, you bring it back. You know what I'm saying? You pay me back. And I'll give you a jacket back. You can't do that. That's against our law. Right? Our law say, you know what I'm saying, whatever. You know what I'm saying? She poor. She a widow. She got, you can do that. Daniel come to, Daniel, he got a job. He come picking in my field. You know what I'm saying? Be like, okay, for sure. You can, you can do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? But you got it, Daniel. You know what I'm saying? So I feel you. I'm going to need that back. Until you, so until you bring back, you know what I'm saying, the value, you know what I'm saying, you pay me for what you got. I'm going to go ahead and keep your jacket. For I keep your jacket. It's like a pawn shop. You know, a pawn shop is like, okay, I just need a quick little loan. Right? So I'm going to bring you my PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Then I'll come back. When I pay back the loan, I get my PlayStation back. Right? That's how a pawn shop is supposed to work. If I, de excuse me, if I default, then guess what? The pawn shop has a new PlayStation that they can sell. So that's how the pawn shop ended up selling all this cheap stuff. Because they got it. Because somebody got a loan from them. They didn't pay the loan back. They got to keep their merchandise. Now they get to sell it and they get to make that money back. That's how they recoup on their money. Right? So it was kind of like that. It's like you can't, you can't do that to a poor person. To the fatherless or to the widow, right? So Boaz knew that. Yeah, we when we read that, you're not gonna see Boaz trying, Boaz trying to pull nothing like that. He knew that, right? Let's see. Keep going. But thou shalt remember that you was a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed you from there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. All right, go. Uh, let's go back. Should have left off about verse eight, nine. All right, so this is uh, Ruth, chapter 2, verse 7. Oh, no, 5. We left off at 5. This is Ruth, chapter 2, verse 5. Then Boaz said unto the servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? Mm -hmm. And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Mm -hmm. 
And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Right? So she asked. She was like, just let me, you know what I mean? Just let me pick, you know what I'm saying? Just, like, just pick everything, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Just let me pick, you know what I'm saying? So let's see what Boaz, let's see how Boaz going to be like, no, nah, man, it's my field. Like, get your butt up from there. Let's see. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Mm -hmm. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hear thou not, my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from here, but abide here fast by my maidens. Mm -hmm. Let your eyes be on the field that they do reap and go out after them. Mm -hmm. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch you? And when no, you the boy won't touch you in my darn field. What do you think Boaz was doing? He had to protect her. He's protecting her. Mm -hmm. Don't go. No, no, no. Don't go to no. I don't know what these other people might do. So don't go to no other field. Come to my field. Matter of fact, I already told the boy, they don't touch you. All right? Let's see. Keep going. And when you are thirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Mm -hmm. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, why have I found grace in your eyes that you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? See how see how she is looking at it. She now before she came, what was what was what was she apt to do? Go pick somewhere where she see somebody that find grace in her eye. Mm -hmm. She knew what was about to happen. Ruth probably had it going on. You know what I'm talking about, Ruth? She knew what was about to happen. She walk over there. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, boy, I do exactly what she wanted to happen. Boy, she like, oh, how'd you take notice of me? Young Ruth. Boy, I'm like, don't even worry about it. These boys ain't gonna touch you. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You get it. All right, let's see. Grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, grab John, right? Because it's interesting. We, uh, we talked about, we talked about in, what was it? It was Revelation 14. Revelation 14, we were reading down, and it said that he went out to get the harvest, right? He said it was a harvest, and he went out to get the harvest, right? Now that's what she's doing. She's like, let me glean from your field. She's harvesting. So watch this. This is John chapter 4. Um, give me verse. This is John chapter 4, verse 31. Watch this. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, has any man brought him out to eat? Right, the disciple looking like, did somebody bring him something? What are you talking about this meat? Y'all gotta see this. Y'all gonna be appreciating y'all sure, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all be y'all be looking like, oh, look how sweet y'all sure. No, nah, man, he's, he's kind of a jerk. You know what I'm saying? You gotta look at him like nobody ever knew what he was talking about. He like, you know what I'm saying? Look, let's go eat. Nah, I got some food that y'all don't know nothing about. That's how, you, I mean, you have to kind of put yourself, I mean, we reading this old English. But that's what I read it again. Watch this. I'm going to translate it for y'all. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But like, they going, they going to him. I know you want. We've been walking. We've been doing all this preaching. I know you hungry. Master, come on, eat. He turned around. He was like, what did he say? But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. No, I got something to eat that y'all don't know nothing about. Now, they've been with the van all day. All day. They know that when they left, nobody had anything to eat. Right? They get here and it's like, okay, look, we got you something to eat, master. We bring you something to eat. Here you go eat, because I know we all hungry. You've been with us. You hungry too. Man turn around and be like, no, nah, I got some food y'all don't know nothing about. So now they looking around like, you brought some food? Tashi, you brought some food? Who brought some food? You brought some food? Where you get some food from? So now we interested like, what you eating? You know what I'm saying? What you trying to eat? Watch this. Watch what man say. Therefore, the disciples said one to another, hath any man brought him all to eat? They asking each other. Somebody bring him something to eat? I don't remember nobody bringing nothing. Watch this. And Yahshua said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You ever met one of them super Christians? You know what I'm saying? You get to talking to them. You know what I'm saying? Irritate all of them. You get to talking to them and be like, Yeah, well, you know, you know I just uh, I just want to make it far in life. You know what I'm saying? I just want to like really, 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 really like, you know what I'm saying? Really like, really put my all into school. But you know what you need to be doing is putting your all into God. You know what I'm saying? Doing something like that. And they hit you up like, I'm just talking about something practical right now. You always got to make it religion. Then we used to hate that thing. Y'all, she was the worst one. They took, look, they come to the man talking about, look, I just want to make sure you fed. You know what I'm saying? Let me bring some food. We know he ain't ate all day. We sit there, we went all, we just walked all the way to the store, 
Give him some food. We thought we were being thoughtful for him. He didn't ask for food. We just know we hungry, so he must be hungry too. So we go, we get him some food. We say, okay, here y'all, so here goes some food for you. Man said, oh, he just brushed us up. Now nah, I got some food y'all don't even know nothing about. That's all right, be quiet. So now we start asking, you know what? Did you bring him food? Did you bring him? You didn't bring him no food? What is that? Then he hear us over talking, and he said, you know what? No, nah, my food is to do the will of the Father. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, man. All right, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But that's how he thought. His thinking was, let me bring you back to what we talking about. Let me bring you back to so y'all worried about food. Y'all out there, y'all going to get food. Did I ask for food? I'm worried about trying to do the will of the Father. That type of focus. Like, we don't, we don't have people with that type of focus. We're not dealing with that type of focus nowadays. People, I mean, everything that pop up, it's like, what's that movie, uh, what's the movie, the movie with, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. What movie is it? You got a bunch of kids. What movie is it? You know the movie? You can't focus on nothing. Because I'm not, I can't remember. I ain't never seen it myself, but people talk about it all the time. What movie? It's a cartoon. What movie? The dude that can't focus. And he say something. Squirrel. There you go. Squirrel. What movie is that? Oh, it's uh, Ice Age. Ice Age. You know what I'm saying? You're a squirrel. No, that's no, no, up. No, that's up. But it's not. Uh, yeah, it's it's squirrel, not, okay, right? It's a dog. Yeah, it's a dog. Right? It's a dog. Right. Whatever. Squirrel. You know what I'm saying? Be like squirrel. They be doing that thing to work all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I am at work. Like at work, I be like mid sentence talking about something. And then somebody walk by. You know what I'm saying? I like talk about their, you know what I'm saying? Talk about something. I make fun of them or do something. You know what I'm saying? They always be like squirrel. You know what I'm saying? Because I never focus on like whatever I'm doing. Literally, they know I do be focusing, you know what I'm saying? I just like to break up the, the time and everything, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what the, he like squirrel. So, that's what we are. You know what I'm saying? We kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Nowadays, everybody just dividing their attention to everything. Everything. Just dividing their attention. Y'all sure wasn't like that. So, you mean to tell me if you had a man like that, that was leading you that darn focus, and we struggle to be that darn focus, you don't think we'd be irritated by the man? We trying to bring him some food. He's on my no, I got some food you don't even know about. Now he got us scrambling like, you brought some, who brought some food? What's on the food? Where is that? I spent this money on this food. I bought it for him. Just that nothing. He's like, oh no, my food to do the will of the father. Just shut our whole plan down. In other words, what I'm saying is, I don't want your darn food and I'm trying to work right now. Then watch what he tell him next. Should be on like verse 34, 35. Yahushua said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. When they say meat, it's, talking, it's, it's, it's translated as food. Right? That's how we look at it when we say meat. He said, My food is to do what? The will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Okay. Say ye not, there are yet four, hour, four months and then comes harvest. He says, Say ye not that there are yet four months and then comes harvest. In other words, he's saying, Don't say that harvest ain't for, for another four months. Right? Don't say, oh, okay, we got time for harvest. It's, no, it's four months away. He said, don't say that. Right? What you going to say instead? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, ready to harvest. He said, it's harvest time right now. Don't say, don't say, oh, it's time to harvest in about four months. No, no, no. It's harvest time right now. Right? Let's hear about it. And he that reaps receives wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal, mm -hmm. that both he that sow and he that reap may rejoice together. Right? So now he's telling us, oh, he's going to tell us next. Go ahead. Go ahead Hearing, herein is that saying true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that where you bestowed no labor. Mm -hmm. Other men labored and you are entered into their labor. Mm -hmm. And many of the Samaritans in the city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified he told me after all that I ever did. All right. So we look at it and he's telling us, go out there and reap right now. Don't wait. Go out there and reap right now. You reaping somewhere that you didn't what? Labor. You didn't put any of the work in. But guess what? You get the benefits. You get the benefits. Who's that sound like? What about Ruth? What about Ruth? Yeah. Right? Ruth ain't do nothing. Ruth, all she did, man. Let me go ahead and pick in the field. Somebody's gonna find some grace on me. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody's gonna look upon me and have a little grace. Did she go look over there? Boy, I'm like, don't you go to know what the this no, this is your field. Like this is where you stay, right here. These boys ain't gonna touch you, don't worry about it. Right? They there, she start gleaning in they field. You know what I'm saying? Taking a little bit, taking a little bit, taking a little bit. She didn't work for none of that. The young boys might have been like, we've been, we 
been working this thing all darn year. She ain't working for none of that thing. Be like, don't touch her. That's why you had to tell her. Don't touch her. Don't tell her. Don't say nothing to her. Don't touch her. Because then you know you can imagine they looking like, man, we've been working this thing all year. She just come in here. Boy, I said it was all right. All right, don't touch her. Don't say nothing to her. All right, keep going. We going back to Ruth, my bad. This is Ruth chapter, uh, we can go to chapter three. We can skip around a little bit. This is Ruth chapter three, verse one. We're going to try to finish all of Ruth real quick. It's Ruth chapter 3, verse 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Mm -hmm. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens you were. Behold, he went over with bear barley tonight in the threshing floor. Mm -hmm. Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee. And what that mean? What that? Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint thee. What that mean? Put some oil on, you know what I'm saying? That thing said anoint. That thing said oil up. Right? She told her. Naomi told her, like, go ahead and get oiled up now. You know what I'm talking about? Go ahead and wash yourself up. Go ahead and get oiled up now. Yeah, Naomi, she. Naomi was a. No, Naomi was a grown woman. She knew what was going on. She was like, listen, you know what I'm saying? Go in there looking nice now. I'm going there all ashy. That don't make no darn sense. Try to run up on Boaz. Boaz got money now. He ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Just, don't run up on Boaz all ashy. Like, yeah, now, boy, go ahead and put a little, go ahead and anoint them elbows a little bit. You'll be all right. Get going in there. Watch this. To y'all light skin people, you ain't got to worry about anointing. Not at all. I've been having an anoint since I was a young buck. You know what I'm talking about? Put that thing in. You know what I'm saying? My whole tub was oil. I just had to dip in there. That's how you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, that thing don't take. I'll be telling my guy, like, what ashy? What you talking about? Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? And I remember one time, you know what I'm saying? My mama, so my mama, you know what I'm saying? My mama, you know what I'm saying? My mama used to, used to, uh, my mama used to be a strong woman. Let's just say that. So for some reason, I ain't gonna get into no detail. Police came to the house. You know what I'm saying? So we upstairs, you know what I'm saying? And we just sitting there, and we, you know, we we kind of used to it. It's like, oh, whatever, you know what I'm saying? We just watching TV, but we closed off in the room. You know what I'm saying? And the police come up there and like, hey, is everybody all right? Is that another? There's a black cop though. And there was a white cop downstairs. So he came up there with us. And he was like, everybody all right? Shining the light, messing with us. And we was like, yeah, we good. It's another. So I'm just chilling there. You know what I'm saying? I think I was playing a game or something. I'm just relaxing. So the cop looked at me. And he was like, he was playing with us the whole time. But after a while, he looked at me. He was like, boy, them your darn feet? He said, I thought them was socks on your feet. <laughs> Cause my leg was super ashy. I was like, man, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> to this day, my sister been making fun of me, I think. My people were like, just white. That's because I'm an original Hebrew. Y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. That's the glory of a Hebrew. How you gonna anoint yourself if you ain't even ashy? <laughs> if you ain't ashy, how you gonna anoint yourself? <laughs> Bro, don't get back to you walking around, I was ashy. You trying to tell me that thing, it's something good. That's funny, then? Oh, man. All right. Let me back to the book. <laughs> More of the story. Now, uh, Ruth wasn't Nash. <laughs> Wash well, thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man mm -hmm. until he shall have done eating and drinking. Okay. So she said, go on down there. Wait until the man get done eating and drinking. You trying to tell me Naomi didn't know what she was talking about? Let him eat and drink first. After he get done eating and drinking, then make yourself known to the man. All right, let's see. And it shall be when he lies down that you shall mark the place where he shall lie and you shall go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down and he will tell thee what you shall do. Okay, so now think about this. I'm a man, I just got done eating and I just got done drinking. I lay down in my bed. Single man at that, right? I lay down in my bed, right? Woman come on, she come. She don't jump in the bed all next to me and none of that. She lay at the bottom. And what be the coldest part? I mean, you just sleeping, you know what I'm saying? You sleeping. What be the coldest part? Them darn feet, right? Don't you? Okay, I don't know if it's just me. You, you know what I'm saying? You laying down in the cover, and it always seems like the feet is the part that the cover never really get right. You feel the air kind of creeping underneath the cover every now and again. So what I do is I like wrap my feet up underneath the cover and put that thing down just like that. So imagine, you know what I'm saying, Boaz, he probably didn't even get a chance to do that thing yet. You know what I'm saying? He just got it, little air hitting his feet, then all of a sudden his feet just get warm. 
Because somebody just laying like near his feet or on the top of his feet. Right? That's what Naomi said. Look, just do that. Naomi got games. She knew what she was doing. Just lay on his feet. Dirt, now. Wait till you get done eating. Anoint yourself. Put a little bit of raiment on. Don't go in there naked. Now put some clothes on. In our country, we, uh... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and lay down on the feet. Trust me, you know what I'm saying? You'll be all right. Keep the little feet warm. And then after that, what, what did Naomi say? She said, after that, what's going to happen? He shall tell you what to do. Yeah, don't worry about it. After that, he'll tell you what you need to do. Right? Let's see what he say. And she said unto her. Oh, y'all minds in the gutter. What y'all think about to happen? Watch this. And she said unto her, all that you say unto me, I will do. Mm -hmm. And she went down unto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. Mm -hmm. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk mm -hmm. and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of at the end of the heap of corn. Mm -hmm. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, who art thou? Mm -hmm. That's me. I don't know why. You're right. And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art ne a near kinsman. Mm -hmm. And he said, blessed be thou so, the so Lord. Y'all might not understand what she was saying just yeah, now. But, right? You know what I'm saying? She, like, on the, on the like, surface, what's happening? on the surface, it just seemed like, you know what I'm saying, share your cover with me real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, on the surface, that's what it looked like she just said. Just can you share, you know, that cold, go ahead and share me a little bit of your cover. Right? But that's not what she said. She said, spread your skirt over me. That's his clothes, right? Spread your skirt over me, for I am a what? Near kin. Or he is you a near kin. Yeah, she, he is a near kin. Right? So her husband is a near kinsman to Boaz. According to our law. Oh, let's oh yeah. Law. Let's talk about some law. Let's grab uh, what I'm looking for. Deuteronomy. What I'm looking for? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, give me 25. It's Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Mm -hmm. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her. And her husband's what? Her husband's brother. So if her husband die, she can't go on to a stranger. Guess what's supposed to happen? Her husband's brother is supposed to go. Right? What else? And shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. Mm -hmm. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say unto my husband, and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his, bro his brother a name in Israel. All right. not perform the duty of my husband's brother. So our law says, if I, right, marry Tasha, and then I die before Tasha has any kids. It only works if Tasha don't have no kids, right? So if I die before Tasha has any kids, then my brother has to come, and he has to take her, and he has to spread my seed, continue it on to work. So any kids that they have together, that's really my kids, right? So that would be my legacy. But he has to do it in my stead because I wasn't able to have kids with it because I died, right? So if that happened, my brother would come, right? My brother can't do that because I got kids. My brother trying to touch my wife now. He ought to get his head shot off, right? But I'm just saying, in theory, if I didn't have no kids, my brother could come in and he could be like, okay, you know what? Let me go to this. That's according to our law, right? Now, if my brother refused, he just said, no, I'm not about to do that. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's like a sister to me. I can't do it. No, that's crazy, right? If he refused, then my wife, according to our law, would be able to take him to the gate. And she would be like, yo, he refuses to continue on my, my ex, my, uh, my dead husband's seed. Right? He's going against the law. So this was what happened. He was, she basically making a claim against him according to our law. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come up to him in the presence of the others. Watch this. And loose his shoe from off his foot. So he's going to take his shoe off his foot. And spit in his face. And spit in his face. And, shall, and answer and shall say, so shall it be done to him that, to that man that will not build up his brother's house. 
Right? In other words, when they say build up your brother's house, in other words, make sure that his brother has some lineage so some stuff can go down. Right? Because I got, I got an inheritance. I'm supposed to be able to pass that down to my kids. I die, then who does that go to? If I don't have any male children for that to go to, then that just means it goes to my wife. My wife marries, and that goes to some other tribe, some other man. Right? It don't go to any lineage of me. I'm just cut off. I'm gone. But if my brother continues on my lineage, then it can go down to what would be my sons. Right? And then that continues on. Keep going. Watch this. And his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that had his shoe loose. Right? The house of him that had his what? Shoe loose. His shoe loose. Right? So that was for the brother. Now, if in this case, both brothers died. So there's no brother left. So that's why she's saying the next kin, right? Now you're the closest family member to that brother because the brother died, so now you have to get somebody close. The whole point was to keep everything within the tribe. Remember, we had tribe. We had 12 different tribes. So we wanted to make sure that my tribe didn't go spread all over over there into this tribe. We wanted to keep everything within our tribe, within our family. God gave everybody their own inheritance. It was their own inheritance. So my land, all that, I was given an inheritance in the land of Judah, right? So then... If I die, huh? They're all cousins. It's probably like a cousin. So if I die, all my land in Judah, if it goes to my wife, what if my wife marries somebody in the in the tribe of Manasseh? Then guess what? Now Manasseh has land in Judah. That's a mess. All right? We two different tribes. You can't train land over here. We're trying to keep it all together. So the whole point was, okay, let's go to the next kin. Both brothers gone. Let's go to the next next kin. Let's go to the next, the, cl the closest cousin. Or the closest, you know what I'm saying, whatever. Alright? So now let's go back to Ruth. Where we leave off? Ruth chapter 3 verse what? Nine. 9. It's Ruth chapter 3 verse 9. Because now it's going to make a little bit more sense what she's saying. And he said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth thy handmaid. Uh -huh. Spread therefore your skirt over to thy handmaid. Uh -huh. For you are a near kinsman. She said, for you are a near kinsman. In other words, she's saying, go ahead and marry me. Right? That's pretty much what she is saying to us. She's like, go ahead and marry me. Now, the law that we just heard, what happens if he refuses? Yeah, take him to the gate to the elders and have his shoe removed. Take his shoe off, and then what else? Spit in his face. She spit in his face. Right? So what she was saying, he knew what she he knew the law. She knew he knew what she was saying. She was like, oh, you near kinsman. So it ain't just as simple as, no, I'm good on that. That thing ain't come with something. You say no to that, then it's like, hmm. kind of shame. Yeah, it's like, hmm, you going to put me out, you know what I'm saying, in front of all the elders? Spit in my face and take off my shoe? It's like, hmm, that may not be what I want to do right now. Right? That may not be what I'm looking for at this very moment. Right? Let's see what Boaz say. Boaz is an honorable man. Watch this. He said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, and as much as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Mm -hmm. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that you request, require, for all the city of my people does know that you are a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman closer than I. He said, there's a what? Kinsman closer than I. So Boaz was like, listen, oh, bless you. I like, I like what you did. I appreciate you. Matter of fact, I take you. However, there is one family member that's closer than me. Boaz knew our law. He knew it wouldn't be appropriate for me to take it before him because I'm not the nearest in kin. He said, there's one person closer than me. Watch what Boaz do with this one person. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning that it will, if he will perform unto thee, the part of kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then I then will I do the part of the kinsman to thee, as the Lord lives. Lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Mm -hmm. Also, he said, Bring the veil that you have upon thee and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her, and he went into the city. Mm -hmm. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who are you, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, 
Sit still, my daughter, until thou, until thou know how the matter will fall. Mm -hmm. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. All right? Naomi knew the whole time. She was looking like, trust me. You just sit right on here. He ain't going to rest until he figure this thing out. She knew he ain't going to be like, oh, shit. Let me go talk to my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Listen, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? If you want her, you know what I'm saying? According to the law, you can have her. I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You know what I'm Do you want to do it? Because he knew he had to get that out of the way first. Otherwise, he'd be caught up in some stuff. But she knew Naomi, like, don't worry about it. He out there frantic. He out there trying to figure that thing out. He ain't going to rest until that thing get figured out. All right? Let's keep going. What up? Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. And they sat down. Mm -hmm. he so said, you notice, Boaz brought who? The elders. Ain't that according to the law? Boaz knew that. Excuse me. Boaz knew the law. Right? Boaz said, you know what? Let me go ahead and bring these elders here. Let's go ahead and take care of this thing all at once. Let's figure this thing out. I want some witnesses. What else happened? And he took the ten men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsmen, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, sell a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. Mm -hmm. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none to redeem it besides you. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Right? So he gave him, a, he first he gave him, a, he kind of set him up. He's like, listen, there's some land out there. You know what I'm saying? The land, you know what I'm saying? The land, technically, it got to fall to the nearest of kin. That's you. You know what I'm saying? So now if you want the land, go ahead and get it. But if you don't want the land, I'll take the land. So then cousin was like, oh, no, I'll take that land. We good. Right? But watch what happened next. <laughs> right. You took the land. Easy, bro. Mm -hmm. Ben said, Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the land of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, mm -hmm. the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Mm -hmm. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Mm -hmm. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing, for to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was the test was a testimony in Israel. So he took off his shoe. All right? That meant, all right, well, I ain't going to do it. I'm not the one. That means I'm redeeming it. It belongs to me now. You didn't want it. This is no, that me. means I'm not. If I take off the shoe, that means I'm not redeeming it. Right. The person right? who has the shoe is saying this right? is Right? In this case, he got the shoe. Right? But necessarily, the person who had the shoe don't mean nothing. It's really the person about the person who's taking off the shoe. Right? So in this situation, yes, the person who had the shoe is the one that's going to end up redeeming. Like a DJ but as soon as, as soon as he take off that shoe, all that show is let the record show uh, the elder there, he's not the redeemer. Right? The one who took off that shoe, that's for sure. He's not going to redeem him. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for yourself. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chialons and Mahalons mm -hmm. in the hand of Naomi. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Mahalon, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his place. You are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. And the Lord make the woman that has come unto your house like Rachel and like Leah. Like Rachel and like Leah. Y'all remember Rachel and Leah? Who is Rachel and Leah? Uh, remember Jacob? Yeah, it's Jacob. Uh, remember Jacob had two wives? He ended up having how many sons? Twelve of the things, right? That's the that's the twelve tribes. Mm -hmm. He had twelve sons. Right? You almost there, don't worry, buddy. You know what I'm saying? He got twelve sons. You can look at them. And that's what he do. It's like he say, okay, look, let's get all these sons out, and that populated the entire nation of Israel, right? So now what they looking at? Remember, the glory of our women were having was having kids, right? We look at it now, it's like you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, you know what I'm saying. But the, back then, the glory that was it. You know what I'm saying? You pop out twelve of them things, you the one, right? So they looking at it like, man, may your woman be like 
Rachel and Leah. Made one woman be like both of them. That was the glory. Right? See that's what they said to her. Alright, now we gotta do some teaching. Right? Let's go to John chapter 13. It's John chapter 13. What verse did we leave off? 11. Chapter 4? Yeah. Okay. This is John chapter 13. I need some more water. Verse, uh, give me verse 4. I can't tell if this video is working or not. This thing looks. Like been frozen this whole time. He rises up from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Mm -hmm. After that, he pours water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Mm -hmm. Then comes he. Who is this he? Yahushua. So Yahushua is doing what right now? Washing his feet. He's washing the disciples' feet. Y'all heard this before? Y'all sure that Jesus washed the disciples' feet? Y'all heard this story before, right? All right, let's read about it. Let me show y'all what y'all never noticed, but nobody ever taught y'all. And then comes he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord. Watch what Peter said. Peter said, listen, this is the son of God, right? This is the man that's going to be the king of all of us. He down here washing off all our feet. So when he get around to Peter, Peter look at him, he say, Lord, Master, what up? He answered and said unto him, wait, he said unto him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Then Yahshua answered and said unto him, what I do, you know not now, but you shall know hereafter. He said, you don't know what I'm darn doing, but you will know. Right? Because Peter looking like, you the king, you gonna wash my darn feet? He said, what I do? You don't understand now, but one day your butt gonna get this, right? You gonna get this thing, right? Watch this. And Peter said unto him, you shall never wash my feet. He said, boy, you not gonna wash my feet. Y'all should, no, 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 no. You the king. Peter said, what I'm gonna do to you? You shall never wash my feet. Uh-huh. And Yahshua answered him, if I wash thee not, you have no part with me. And Simon said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He said, watch everything. Peter was like, oh, if that's the case, go ahead and watch these things. Because he said, if, you, if I don't watch your feet, then you have no part in me. Okay, go ahead and watch everything. Watch this. What up? And Yahshua said unto him, he that is washed need not except to wash his feet, mm -hmm. but is clean every whit. Mm -hmm. And you are clean, but not all. So why do you have to wash his feet? Because he's a redeemer. He'll take his shoe off. I mean, if you wash your feet, you probably got to take your shoe off, right? That's a sign. Peter had to have his shoe taken off. If he said, why are y'all should make it such a big deal? If I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. What group is he doing this to? Hebrews. Not just Hebrews. What, what Of the Hebrews, what group? Disciples. Disciples. And not just disciples. Of the disciples, what group? The apostles. The ones that were going to become apostles. What did the apostles have to do? They had to go out and do what? gospel in his stead. They had to preach it as if they were Yahweh Shua. Yeah. Remember when Paul was talking, he is like, whose gospel was it? Did Paul say Yahweh Shua's gospel or did he say my gospel? My gospel. Paul, was, uh, Paul in the book say this is my gospel because he had to do it as if he was Yahweh Shua himself. That's what the apostles did. So now somebody would mess around and see an apostle walking up doing that. You know what they mess around and think? Paul's the redeemer. They, they think he's the kinsman redeemer. He's the one that's supposed to come in, you know what I'm saying, redeem. So you know what y'all what you have to do to make clear? Take your shoe off. Because that's what happened. When you have a redeemer, the kinsman redeemer, if he wasn't the redeemer, you know what happened? You take the man's shoe off. And by taking the shoe off, it makes everybody know this is not the one who came to save the day. Right? He's not the one who came to, to save the widow. That's not it. Wait for another one. If y'all sure would have let them just walk around with their shoes on, he didn't take their shoes off, we would have met around and been sitting there worshiping Paul and Peter like these Catholics been doing. Right? But we know. Oh, no, y'all sure took his shoe off. That's why he told him. He was like, listen, you don't know what I'm doing now, but you will. And if I don't take your shoe off, 
Oh no, you ain't got no part of me. Why would he not have a part just because just because he didn't wash his feet? Because he wouldn't be the redeemer. He can't. Raise if him. you the redeemer and I'm the redeemer, that means I can't redeem the redeemer. That don't make no sense. You gotta take that thing off. Now I can't raise you up. The point is to raise up children, raise up new children, new life, right? Y'all sure came to raise up his brethren to give their value back, to bring them from the dead. That ain't it. Watch this. John chapter one. Watch this. Diversity is an old, old. <laughs> oh, old shit. This is John chapter one. Give me verse 19. Did that thing work down here? Or was it frozen? What did it look like? Just black? No, it was just you. But it's just one spot? It does not sound. It does not the other times that come. I figured that thing out. Yahshua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. This chapter one? Yeah, verse 19. Okay. Maybe for, uh, no, that's it. Um, you just gotta read on down. That's then good. said the Jews, Forty and six <coughs> years was this temple. Was this. Jump on down to verse 20. I mean, uh, verse uh, 25. No, 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 you're all right. Verse 20 is fine. What's it? Hmm? John 1. John 1, verse 20. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will you rear it up in three days? Mm -hmm. But he spake of the temple of his body. Mm -hmm. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. Mm -hmm. And they believed the scripture and the word which Yahshua had said. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, and the feast day, mm -hmm. many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Yahshua did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. Wait, you said John one. I didn't think we was on John one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Damn, you were just about to let him just keep reading. Right, no. I'm like, wait. I'm about to ask. I'm like, what we I thought I'm like, man, he talking about being at the you Passover. Told him John one, because I went. Yeah, I was in, I was in two, sorry. Tripping, bro. Okay, and this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites That's more to like Jerusalem it. to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Right? So John, first thing he came, I ain't the Messiah. They had somebody to walk up to you. Hey, Daniel, who are you? First thing you did, I am not the Messiah. You just look at that. This man got some issues, right? <laughs> like, he's something wrong with the man. What's wrong with you? I am not the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? But he knew what was going on. He just trying to make it clear. Listen, I'm not him, right? I know what y'all going to start thinking. Y'all going to start thinking I'm the Redeemer. I'm out here talking this big stuff. I'm a prophet. Y'all ain't seen a prophet in about 400 years. I'm out here talking this big stuff. I'm telling people to repent. I sound a lot like the Redeemer. No, no, no. I'm not the Redeemer. So first thing he want to make clear, I'm not the Messiah. What else? Then they said, wait, and they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Mm -hmm. Are you that prophet? And he said, no. Then said they unto them, who are you that we may give an answer to them that sent us? Mm -hmm. What sayest thou of thyself? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. as, the prophet, as said the prophet Isaiah. He said, I'm the one that says, make straight the way of the Lord. In other words, I'm the one that make the path straight for the prophet, I mean, for the uh, Messiah to come through. I'm trying to straighten stuff out so the Messiah can come now. I'm just the one to come first, right? Let's hear it. And they asked him and said unto him, why baptize thou then if you be not the Messiah nor Elijah, neither that prophet? Uh-huh. And John answering them saying, I baptize with water. Uh-huh. There stands one among you whom you know not. He said, there's somebody standing among y'all, and y'all don't even know who, is, who he is. Watch this. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoe latchet I am He not said his whose shoe latchet is what? I am not worthy to unloose. You know what that means? I can't take his shoe off. You know what that must mean? That's the redeemer. If you're not the redeemer, what you got to do? You got to get your shoe taken off. So if you are the redeemer, that means what? You got to take the shoe. You gotta keep them shoes off. That boy, he already knew. The first thing he said is what? I'm not the Messiah. Oh, no, no, no. It's somebody standing among. I ain't gonna point no, I ain't gonna point them out now. But it's somebody standing amongst y'all. That boy, man, I can't even take his shoe off. Let me tell you something. I ain't even worthy to take off his darn shoe. 
right. Let's see. Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 3. This is Exodus chapter 3. We ain't got to read the whole thing. Let's just go to chapter uh, verse 2. Y'all remember Moses? We read all this. All right, we read all this late last year, early last year, I mean. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush was burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. Right? So Moses was like, man, let me see this great sight. Right? Let's see what the Most High God said to him. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, mm -hmm. Moses. And he said, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, draw not, draw not nigh hither. Draw not near here. Put off your shoes from off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Take your shoes off, boy. Somebody would have messed around and thought Moses was the redeemer. Right? Moses come through, he split in red seas. Moses, Moses was the only man that could talk to God. Right? He had all the messages. He told the Pharaoh, yo, sit your butt down. We about to get up out of here. We mess around and be like, you know what? We got to worship Moses. Most our God had to let him know, you're not the redeemer. Take them shoes off. Right? Who came after Moses and led the people? Joshua. Joshua. All right, let's go to the book of Joshua. It's Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. This whole time we've been reading this thing, we ain't, why God tell people to take off their shoes? We didn't know nothing about this holy ground. Oh, okay, the ground is holy. You got people to this day, when they, you know what I'm saying, when they had their congregation, they make everybody take off their shoes. We make y'all take off your shoes because we trying to, you know what I'm saying, we trying to preserve this dirty car, this, this nasty looking carpet. You don't want to look too bad. You know what I'm talking about? So you tell everybody take off their shoes. You know, there's some people that it's like it's part of their religious practice. No, 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 no. Moses took off his shoes in front of the burning bush. Therefore, when you in church, take off your shoes. I'm dead here. Like some churches, like, no, nah, you, you can't take off your shoes. They don't know why they're taking off his shoes. They ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't never seen the church do that. Yeah, yeah. It's the one dude I watched. You know what I'm saying? That was the first time I seen it. Then I went to this Hebrew church and they did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It was a white people Hebrew church. And white boy, you T look, I went to the white people T Hebrew church when I was like, it was like when I was like, it was when I, I started realizing the, what the way these people were teaching the Bible was a lie. So I'm trying to like, how do I get closer to the truth? Mm, I know the Jewish people that are Christians. Like the Jewish Christians. Yeah, that guy, that has to be it. Has to be the truth. So I'm like, all right, let me go with these Jewish Christians. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here listening to them. They taught me some stuff, though. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? They did, they did break some stuff down for me. Who might that be? And it's Randy. Randy, come on in. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that uh, I was I was up in there, and then you know I was, I was just sitting there, and they would uh, they'd tell me. You tell them to come in. They uh, the door's already unlocked. They'd uh, they you know what I'm saying, just sit there and tell me and all this stuff. And they used to say, everybody is Israel. It's like okay. This is there's like this how this thing breaks down. It's like you have the tribe of Judah, and then you have the the tribes of Israel. The tribes of Israel were scattered around all the earth, and they mixed with all the people. So now everybody has a little bit of Israel in them. Yeah, so we, they be talking about. <laughs> I be looking like I'm my stupid self. I'm like, dang, that makes sense. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, dang, these white folks know everything. Meanwhile, I ain't never put. When have you ever heard? The smallest nation on earth mixing with all the nations on earth. Now everybody got a little piece of this nation. Y'all need to stop all that darn line. Right? I appreciate God bring me out of that darn place. You remember when I went there, right? I used to go to the you know, I went there a couple times. Damn, weird. I used to eat. I brought you there? No, I ain't going to. Oh, I was about to say, yeah, I'm saying my fault. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now he brought he he didn't brought me to a wild place though. He excited about that thing too. I'll talk about you. Don't talk about my little. Sure, bro. Don't, don't talk about my escapades. You know what I'm saying? That thing wasn't wild though. Now, that thing was wild. That thing was wild. That thing was a little weird though. That thing was a little weird. They, they call themselves non denominational. They butts used to be up in there speaking in all types of tongues. Yeah, I'm used to black people doing it, but to see white folks speaking tongues, I didn't know Are what was going on. Nah, probably. That thing was... Apologize to it right now. <laughs> My bad for anybody I ever, <laughs> ever brought to that thing. Well, yeah. That, that thing called the Potter out. 
Yeah. That's TD Jake's church. Yeah, that thing. That thing. They had like three black people in there though. Yeah, the pink You know what I'm saying? Yeah, three black people. Black dude had me coming. Yeah, had me going. You know what I'm saying? That thing was just close to the crib. Yeah, buddy. Let's see. What we got? And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the children of Israel, mm -hmm. until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Is Joshua 5? Yeah. Jump on down to 13. Verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was led by Jericho that he lift up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him. He said there stood, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn. Right? What's going on, Tuffy? You all right? Go out there and play as a kid. Don't you see I'm in the middle of doing Bible study? No, go on and watch something. Okay, we're going in there. What we got? And he said they stood over there with a man with a sword drawn against him. With a, a, man. a man with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and said unto him, Are you for us or our adversaries? Look, Joshua saw the man. Man had a sword on. Joshua, well, you know Joshua with He always been with it. He was one of the twelve that went over there. And he had two of the twelve that were just like, Now we got this. Joshua was with him. Right? Joshua wasn't scared too much now. Joshua was like, Hold on, man. What you talking about? You for us or you against us? <laughs> then the man came back. What the man say? And he said, no, but as a captain of the host of the Lord, as I am I now come. He said, no, I'm running the host of the Lord. I got a whole army from God. That's how I came. What did he say next? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what says my Lord unto his servant? Right. And the captain of the Lord's, uh, Lord's host said unto Joshua, loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. He said, take your darn shoe off, boy. Joshua walked up and like, man, hold on. You for us or you against us? He said, man, I'm, I'm running the host of the Lord. I'm running the heart. I'm the one who lead the army of the Lord. You know who you talking to, boy? He was like, oh, my bad. What you want? You know what you want me to do? Right? He bowed down like, hey, what you want me to do? Right? Then he said, oh, you know what I want you to do? Take off your darn shoe. These people mess around think you the redeemer. You bringing them into the land. You directing all the armies. Everybody getting chopped up. You know what they mess around and think? You the Redeemer. You share the same name as the Messiah gonna have. Mm -hmm. They gonna mess around and think you was the one. Take your darn shoe off. But notice when it came to Yahushua, oh no, we can't take off his shoe. Neither was his. Matter of fact, when Peter was like, I'ma wash your feet, Yahushua was like, No, you not. <laughs> that, you know what you gotta do? You gonna mess around and take off my shoe. Oh no, that's not happening. That don't make no darn sense. Whole book testified to men. We thought we were reading about Ruth. We was in there the whole time. You know what we thought we had learned about? We thought we had learned about Ruth and Boaz. That don't make no sense. We had learned about, go back to Revelation chapter 21 where we started. I don't know how we got here. Who told, who told us to go to Revelation? I don't know how we got here. Revelation chapter 21. What verse we leave off on? Whole book. It don't matter where we start, where we end. Whole book gonna line up. It gotta line up. What we gonna do? If the book don't line up, what we got? Whole book gonna line up every time. Watch this. It's Revelation chapter 21, verse what? Five. Verse 5. What my mom just come and leave? What happened? Oh, I probably gotta keep them. My brother got went to jail. Go ahead. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. I will give unto him that are thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers and whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me that the city... 
that's the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of, the he out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God in her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Mm -hmm. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. And at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, south three gates, and the west three gates. Mm -hmm. And the wall of the city had twelve fountains, foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And he that walked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lies four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. Mm -hmm. The length and the breadth of the height of it are equal. Mm -hmm. And he measured the wall thereof 140 and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. Mm -hmm. And the building of the wall of it was jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, third, Salah, what verse? Uh, 19. What's the last verse? And there shall in no wise. No, no, no what's the number? 27. All right, go ahead and finish it off. And the third, and the fourth, an emerald, and the fifth, sardonyx, and the sixth, sard sardius, the seventh, Shurosolite and the eighth barrel, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophorus, and the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Mm -hmm. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Mm -hmm. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and mm -hmm. the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Mm -hmm. And the gates of it shall not be shut all day, all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So what we just saw was the marriage, right? You had this, this Jerusalem, everything that he described was Jerusalem coming out, and he said it's the bride, Yahushua being the husband. That was the redemption, right? Just like Boaz took Ruth, right? If we would have kept on reading, we ain't got to finish it out, but Boaz ended up marrying Ruth. That was the redemption. Jerusalem is the Ruth in this situation. Yahushua is the Boaz in this situation. And he redeems us because we're connected to Jerusalem. Right? And everybody who walks in Jerusalem is anybody who does not make offense. Right? So that's what we look at the whole book. No matter how you slice and dice this thing, whole book talking about him. Right? That's why he tells us, get out there and harvest. When he say harvest, what he's talking about is get out there and get you do your good works. Because in doing that, people then are a light, are, are see the light that we are. And then they become attracted to it. Right? And they come our direction. They come to where we are. You ain't got to go chase them. We just do what we're supposed to do. Most of God said, these what these things you're supposed to do. He never told us to go chase no sinners. Mm -hmm. That don't make sense. It don't make sense. He just never told us to do it. He never said that. He said, look, these are the things I want you to do. If you do this, it's going to send you in that direction. If you go in that direction, you're going to start noticing there's going to be more and more people that come in that direction with you, just looking for you. Then as they look for you, guess what they're going to end up finding? Me. Y'all are sure that is. Right? That's how that thing works. Whole book testified to man. Any questions? All right, let's pray out.